Hi, I'm Mike. I'm here with Utastic at Chicago WebConf again. And I'm sitting with Aaron Kalin. Aaron has been heavily involved with uh, well, the Ruby community, doing a lot of speaking over the years. But also, uh, he's uh, your uh, trainer at, at Treehouse. And uh, today, he just did a panel discussion at Chicago WebConf. Uh, Aaron, can you, can you tell a little bit about how you, how, like, what is, how is it different doing a, uh, a, a presentation versus doing like a panel? And how did you prepare for it? Did you prepare differently or? Uh, well, I'd never, I'd never done a panel style thing before. I've been to conferences where there's panels, you know, so I kind of know what the format was. But I got this sort of last minute from uh, JC, mm -hmm. one of the organizers. Um, I think just literally a couple days ago, he'd already been mentioning it to me, but it wasn't really official yet. And then literally about two days ago, I got an email saying, hey, I realize it's last minute, mm -hmm. but do you want to moderate the, uh, the panel on the future of, of web? I said, sure, why not? And I had no idea what I was getting into. Yeah. Um, but so, you know, I'm sort of like a Boy Scout. I want to be prepared. So yeah. I started researching online, um, just like trying to get prepared for it, like getting in the mindset and everything. Okay. So, I mean, how is that different from like when you prepare to do a regular presentation? Is it, is it vastly different or is it a very different mindset? It's one I think you would be one of the, like, what am I going to talk about? What, is, mm -hmm. what are they going to talk about? Well, I, so I guess the, the huge difference is that you know, when it's a presentation, it's it's actually a bit more about you. People, mm -hmm. you know, especially if like uh, you're one of the you know, seen at conferences where they announce the speakers really early before they close call for proposals. I've been one of those where they like directly invite you, with the exception yeah. of I think Windy City Rails, but it's not to where like people are coming to see you directly. Right. So at that point, a presentation is really all about the speaker. Right. And you know, of course you want to include the audience and all that stuff in there, but it's really more of like sent, you know, you're self-focused. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the exact opposite on a panel. Um, you, you want to moderate and be sort of the guy with the whip, um, mm -hmm. but you also don't want to be the center of attention because it's about the panelists and not the moderator specifically. So there's this weird balancing act you have to play. Uh, at least you know everything I was reading about it, and it started to make sense about all the panels that I've seen that I thought were good, of where the moderator doesn't become the center of attention, mm -hmm. and more or less you know the you try to ask some questions that aren't necessarily directly polarizing, but enough to invoke some good conversation because you want to get you know, everyone's opinions, and especially if you have a panel of very differing backgrounds and opinions, you're going to get some sometimes very similar um, or very different answers, and just balancing that where it's not about you, and that's right. the hard part. Yeah. Like I'm used to pre presenting where it's like, yeah, hey, these are my stories, this is my, you know, subject I want to talk about, all that stuff, but then switching that completely off and trying to keep that, you know, curb and not try to start, like, stealing attention is, is, is difficult. <laughs> yeah. And when when you were doing this uh, the presentation, were all the panelists first time panelists, or they had ever sat on a panel before? I didn't get enough time to really ask, so oh. I'm gonna go check after yeah. after this interview and and sort of you know like, hey that was cool. Um, I think that I only got to say that to Jen because Tim yeah. was already kind of walking away. David was still there but talking to someone else and I was saying like you know great job you know yeah. you guys did a good uh, good job and everything. So I don't really I'll have to go collect their thoughts afterwards to make sure you know one I did a good job and you know the other thing too when you're a moderator is you don't want to. You want to make the panelists look really smart, and you yeah. don't want to belittle them at all, and you don't want to you know, railroad them in any way. But you also don't want them to become the center of attention. So that's like the other part of it too, of you know making sure that you keep control of anyone who starts to take the mic. And you know, I, I told them before we started, like there's for me there's a hard like two minute limit yeah. or something close to it. If it's a good conversation, I'll let it go. But if you start rambling and getting on a pulpit, then I'm gonna pull you down. I'm yeah. Gonna, you know, get the audience to say something or something like that. Did, now, if somebody did go off, I mean, I'm, I'm going to presume that nobody went off the rails here, um, but did you learn any techniques like, oh, if somebody is starting to kind of uh, rant a bit or, or, or hog the mic, was there any like um, kind of tips or tricks that you learned? Like, oh, say this kind of thing or this is how you can diffuse it? Yeah, um, so I read a couple different techniques. Um, one was to sort of you know find a spot when they're grabbing their breath. So you have to start mm -hmm. when start noticing in your head that they're going a little bit beyond. Like I was also you know looking at my iPad occasionally to see 
you know, the, the clock and all that stuff, and I started noticing they were getting a little bit off on a tangent. I think that only really happened, like I was aware of it once or twice. Yeah. Um, and that's when you're, you know, the trigger starts to go in my head of, okay, I need to start <clears throat> listening to what they're saying. So at some point, if I can find a graceful pause, right. then I'll interject a joke somewhere. Like, oh. I'll try to do that. So, like, I'll, you know, and it's, it's sort of easy to do with the front end stuff. So, you can feel like, you know, to throw in comic sans or just yeah. something to get the audience to, to laugh sure. and get the audience to break that pattern. And then, you know, I guess, you know, usually people will sort of get the message like, I just stopped you gracefully, so just let it go. Yeah. Um, and then the other technique, too, is also um, interjecting with, like, adding on to the conversation. So you sort of step in and you yeah. grab the, the mic for a minute and then you can disperse it back out. Okay, so, so. yeah, so one is kind of a. I, I want to say like uh, the magicians look over here. I, there's a word for it. I, I'm just drawing a blank on it, but yeah, just uh, not misdirection, the, misdirection, yeah, yeah, misdirection. And then the other one was helping them take that step and realizing, oh, okay, I. Because one of the things I do with with the interviews is if I feel like somebody's starting to repeat themselves, mm -hmm. that's uh, usually the time where if we're starting to come back around mm -hmm. on the topic, like if we started it talking about one subject one off and then all of a sudden now it feels like oh we're back on that topic either it's either a graceful stopping point or try to push him back uh, to the original topic mm -hmm. um, you've also taught classes uh, and uh, you know I'm, I'm sure you've had to deal with um, uh, you know 